Ezekiel is always seen as the biggest loser of total drama, but what if we went with the hardest challenge of all? What conditions would have to be met for this homeschooler to win total drama? Well, I'm here to take a swing at this. For episode 1, Ezekiel really doesn't have to do anything major in the challenge. Zeke was really helpful this episode and has no reason to be voted off besides overall social awkwardness. So with that, Courtney actually goes home, and that is huge because she is the reason some of his potential best allies go home. Now, to be totally clear, I am saying that Ezekiel does not say anything at the cafeteria scene. For episode 2, Ezekiel could let Eva take the dive here, but I think we can make this more interesting. Ezekiel has a big mouth, and because he doesn't really have people to talk to, he would notice Heather grab Eva's MB3 player. Being himself, he would blurt out what he just saw, and Eva would become angry at Heather and actually be thankful to Ezekiel for being honest with him. Now, she won't like Zeke as much, but this is a good start. Beyond that, I think Zeke and Tyler get along fine this episode, along with maybe Jeff who tries to teach him some ways to be cool with the ladies like himself. This is great because it keeps them as options for the future. Harold and Zeke would definitely get along as they just have that loser vibe matched perfectly. Now we have no reason to believe Zeke would actually do well in this challenge, and I doubt he will be able to convince Duncan not to sleep, so they will be sent to elimination, as was in canon. Now, Eva's attitude will still rub the team the wrong way, but not enough to vote her off, I think. Nobody will want to vote Zeke off still because he hasn't done anything wrong, so honestly, I think they will just get rid of someone annoying here, and I think the team will either vote Harold or Katie off, but I think Katie gets the boot in the end. Now, I was thinking of how episode 3 would go, but honestly, Eva being there alone probably is more than enough to beat the Screaming Gophers, and honestly, I think Zeke would tell Tyler to straighten up after his first few missed shots, which would make him play better, but it wouldn't exactly matter as they would still win without Duncan's help. And worst case scenario, Eva will wake Duncan up and tell him to do it, and though Duncan will have an attitude, he still will help in the end, giving them the, the win over the Screaming Gophers. Now we have no reason to believe things would change in this elimination, so Noah is still going home. Episode 5 would still have Killer Bass winning, especially since Zeke would step up for Her Harold and implore them to try to get him in, to which the group would reluctantly do it. Things go largely as in canon and Justin is gone. Episode 6 is the first real change here. This is the episode Katie goes home because she wanders off with Sadie, but this time there is no Katie to screw things up for them, and in canon the group made it back before the Screaming Gophers, so honestly I think the Screaming Gophers lose this, and the vote is between Owen and Izzy here. I think Izzy has more reason to go home, but Heather actually makes a deal with Izzy that if she votes Owen off, they can be in a group to which she agrees, and I think they could probably rope someone like Cody in or Lashana in. Though Lashana is very stubborn and holds grudges more than the others, so I don't know if she would 100% vote for Owen, but they seem alright for now at this point in the game, so maybe if someone like Beth goes and talks to her or Cody, they will vote for Owen, giving them 5 votes in majority. Episode 7 is going to be huge for changes here, and I think unlike in the original, it would come down to someone like Duncan or Eva needing to face their fears for the win against the Screaming Gophers, which I think both of them could do unlike Courtney, aka the worst total drama contestant in the series. So unlike in canon, the Killer Bass win another challenge. Now I think Trent is getting eliminated here due to leaving Gwen buried in for so long, and Cody is just happy to have him gone so he will easily jump on the tra train to get him out so he can have Gwen all to himself. Zeke's main team currently is Tyler, Harold, Eva, a little, and Sadie who kind of adopted him as her new best friend in the game despite not exactly liking her all that much. Episode 8 begins and there are some new things happening because there are a few extra members than in canon. Actually, Killer Bass have the same amount of teammates Screaming Gophers had in canon at this point, so I think the extra group would be paired together, Eva and Tyler. Now, I don't think they get along super great since Eva is antagonistic and would probably antagonize poor Tyler here on this boat ride for being too weak compared to her while Zeke and Bridget would talk more, and Zeke would say how Jeff's gift he made for Bridget was nice considering he could have just made nothing, which it actually makes Bridget feel bad about the whole thing. Now in canon, this is where Izzy goes home, so this is where she goes here as well, I think. Episode 9 begins and Harold, Bridget, and Jeff still remain as the team's shooters, 
as there isn't any reason to believe things would change, and instead of Owen being the shooter for the Screaming Gophers, it would be Gwen. Now frankly, I am not gonna have a whole season where Screaming Gophers lose, but frankly I can't imagine their team winning here with the current mutiny going on. Cody still gets sent out because of his injuries, and the episode ends. Episode 10 is largely the same, but they don't have Owen to mess it up, but even still it doesn't exactly matter as even with Owen gone, it's too late for them to win to begin with as the dessert still is the same. Beth goes home as in canon, but next episode will start a chain reaction like none other. Episode 11 is the first major changeup. Two members of Killer Bass are sent over to the Screaming Gophers, and I think it'll be Tyler and Eva getting sent over. Tyler is more than happy with this, as this means that he and Lindsay can finally be on a team and continue their relationship together. The first round goes the same as in canon. The second round will have Tyler replace Trent, with him having full faith in Lindsay's abilities, as he seems to just be that good, caring boyfriend type. Before, you know, he's inevitably poisoned due to the ill-prepared pufferfish Lindsay feeds him. Zeke and Sadie are teamed up in the archery contest, and Zeke tries to help Sadie along with Eva taking hits from Lashana before finally getting, knock getting it knocked off on the final shot as Eva is about to storm towards her. Eva is still pissed, but is told it's okay as they won in the end by Gwen. But Chris interrupts, saying there's more to go, and Bridget and Harold help win the challenge for the killer bass, and in the final challenge, they still lose. Frankly, something about this episode has always bothered me, and it's that DJ screwed the challenge up for everyone, and yet Sadie is the one to go home, so this time Zeke gets himself, Harold, Sadie, and Bridget to vote DJ off here. Because as he adequately points out, it's mostly DJ's fault they lost. Episode 12 is going to be interesting, as there is no Courtney here, but like in canon, Gwen is able to stay in the boot camp long enough to win, and hell, I feel like Eva would as well, as she is the most physically gifted in the contest right now. Now with Duncan bullying Harold, I feel like that would get on Zeke's nerves, so he makes a plan with his group to get rid of Duncan, to which his group agrees with, and Duncan gets eliminated pre-merge. This is the first time in a while that the Screaming Gophers are actually up in members. But for episode 13, I think nothing really changes, and Harold screws everything up for the Killer Bass, sending them to elimination. Sending them to elimination, but this time I think Sadie would actually be getting sent home, as she never really was a huge help in the challenges, and she was just a liability in the long run, getting her sent home. So congrats to this roster. These are the members going to merge, but for more fun, I think um, that Izzy, and let's see... Eva's still in the game, so she can't be brought back, but how about Trent being brought back since he and Gwen haven't made up yet since the Phobia Factor incident? I could bring back Duncan, but what will he really do besides try and bully Harold and be voted off again because of it? Now for more fun, let's talk about the eating challenge with men versus women. Now this has no bearing on the game, but it can pet out the runtime a little bit. Now Zeke seems to be a much more capable eater compared to DJ, but not as much as Owen. So honestly, I think the tiebreaker doesn't need to happen as no man on this team is vegetarian, meaning that they would eat the meat that Bridget wouldn't, allowing them to win before any tiebreaker. Now Trent and Izzy can be brought back, and episode 15 really doesn't change that much with Lashana winning immunity, but things really change at Elimination, where I think Eva isn't exactly friends with anyone, but instead of her being targeted, there's a bigger threat. Gwen and Trent have slightly patched things up, it's gonna take a long time till they are fully back to how things were, but for now, Gwen and Lashana go to Eva and Zeke and are like, yo, we hate Heather, let's get rid of her, and there is no plot armor that can save you here, Heather is gone. Now for episode 16, the challenge really doesn't matter as it all comes down to whoever gets Heather's key, as was in canon. So who gets that one? Well, we have four characters who could get it, but I put all of these new characters into a randomizer. And with 1 through 4, we get 2, meaning ironically enough, Ezekiel gets the immunity. Now, Lindsay and Tyler are kind of out of options here as Heather, their lifeline, is gone. But Lashana and Gwen go to them and are like, hey, get rid of Eva with us, she's kind of crazy and is on Zeke's team. Trent joins in, and I feel like Izzy will help as well because she really doesn't care as long as it's not her, so goodbye Eva, you technically made it one episode later than in canon. 
Episode 17 is the hide and seek challenge, and Lashana wins immunity like in canon. Where does that leave everyone else here? Well, this is the complicated part, and we could go in many, many different directions here. There's a three man group with Bridget, Zeke, and Harold, which might as well be four with Jeff voting with them. Trent votes with Gwen to make things up to her. Lashana and Izzy vote for who they need to. Lindsay and Tyler are in a group together, and I think the later group would realize hey, we could probably be beaten by the killer bass here, so Gwen teams up with Lindsay to vote off Jeff, and Lashana and Izzy join up. But Tyler is hesitant here, as that's his teammate, but he decides to vote him off for Lindsay as they threaten to kick her off if he doesn't. Doesn't comply. Episode 18 I think won't change much with Bridget winning this time and Lindsay coming in second to last which technically means she's last. God this was a terrible elimination. Sorry Lindsay. I think everything would go in canon except Trent would be with Gwen as she kicks the killer in the jaw and would win immunity along with Trent. But it doesn't matter as Chris just decides to kick DJ out in canon for being the lamest death, quote unquote. So instead, I think it would be between Bridget and Tyler. Since Tyler is a klutz and would probably trip on something, and Bridget doesn't strike me as able to handle this level of stress well, and would probably just scream and pass out, so this is where she goes. Episode 20 for laziness sake will have Izzy leaving since she doesn't really take sides or really play the game for that matter, so people will just vote her. So people just vote her since she's the only real easy vote here. Episode 21 will have Zeke and Harold teaming up with Lashana and Tyler being on a team and Gwen and Trent being on the final team. Now Tyler is not anywhere near as gifted as Duncan, but Tyler is no slouch and is underrated especially with someone as motivated as Lashana who can force Tyler's hand who is kind of a mold in this case. And they are able to win immunity the same way Duncan and Lashana won immunity in canon. Tyler asks a favor of Lashana and says he cannot vote for one of his teammates again and asks if they would please vote for Gwen and Trent here for a promise that he won't ever vote for her. She agrees and they say they will vote for Gwen but Trent hears that and fearing for himself he goes to Zeke and Harold and begs them to vote for him instead of Gwen. They agree after a bit and Trent goes to Gwen and says that she needs to vote for him instead of anyone else if she wants to continue the game. Gwen doesn't understand, but that's when Trent says that he loves her, and he believes she can do what he can't in this game. And after a heartfelt goodbye, Trent leaves like he does in canon, Gwen and Trent's relationship fully rekindled. Episode 22, I think instead of Lashana being voted out, I think Lindsay would be like, I wish Tyler were here, and then the cycle would begin and Tyler would get voted out fifth. But this isn't your video yet. You'll get your win soon enough, Tyler. I think Lashana and Gwen win, and Lashana actually votes for Zeke while Gwen votes for Harold. And Harold actually gets to Zeke to vote for him while Gwen votes for Harold. And Harold actually gets Zeke to vote for him as he has the same honor mentality he had during World Tour and decides to sacrifice himself so Zeke can get ahead. And he thanks Zeke for all he's done for him this whole time, and Zeke swears he will make it to the finals for him. Episode 25, and god this is tough as hell to think about who makes it. I think Lashana overall has more willpower than Gwen, considering that in the merge, the first merge episode, Lashana is able to defeat Eva. You know, the same Eva who was able to skin Sasquatch. So frankly, I feel like Lashana somehow, it would probably come down to a tiebreaker round, but I feel like Lashana is able to beat Gwen, and then Gwen is eliminated. The finale is here, and thank god, because I don't have to make any excuses for how Ezekiel can win this, because all finales have an alternate winner. I never said they would be the main winner, I just said I'd make them a winner. Now some of you may say this is contrived and relies heavily on circumstance, and I say leave your thoughts in the comments because it's hard to make this farmer boy a winner, when his only real two appearances are first boots. At least next we have Eva, which... Oh god, that's gonna be worse.